Hello students, in today's video, let us learn about metal semiconductor junctions. So this metal semiconductor junctions, which are formed at the junctions of metals and semiconductors, can be broadly formed in two different types. It can be either a non-ohmic or rectifying type, or it can also be an ohmic type. So these types of metal semiconductor junctions are formed depending on the type of materials that are used to form this junction. It will depend on the work function of the metal and the semiconductor. Now, in a non-ohmic type junction, Ohm's law will not be satisfied and these type of junctions can act like a rectifier. Similarly, in an ohmic type junction, Ohm's law will be satisfied and hence the name. In this video, we will look into a non-ohmic type of metal semiconductor junction, how they are formed and their basic properties and their behavior in forward and reverse biasing. First of all, how can we form a non-ohmic type of metal semiconductor junction? So it can, it can be formed by merging together of a metal of metal and an n-type or a p-type semiconductor and if the work function of the metal and the semiconductor follows any of these relations then we will have a rectifying type of metal semiconductor contact. If the work function of the metal is greater than the work function of an n-type semiconductor such a junction will be a rectifying semiconductor. Similarly, if the semiconductor used this p-type semiconductor, then the work function of the metal should be lesser than the work function of the p-type semiconductor. So, under both these conditions, we will get a rectifying contact. Now, what is work function? Work function is the energy required to excite the electron from the Fermi, Fermi level up to a vacuum level. So, vacuum level is the energy corresponding to the absolute free state or the ionized state of an electron. We know what is Fermi level. In a metal, we define Fermi level as the topmost field energy level. In a semiconductor, Fermi level is defined in another way. It is the level in which the probability of finding an electron is 1 by 2. And the Fermi level is found in between the conduction band and the valence band in a semiconductor. Now in both these levels we consider the vacuum level to be the absolute free state of electron or the ionized state of electron and the work function is the energy required to excite an electron from the Fermi level to the vacuum level. And if the work function of the, of the metal and the semiconductor are known and if they happens to follow any of these relations then the junction form between these materials will be of rectifying type. Let us look into one type of rectifying contact and study about its behavior. So in this figure we have two different materials. The first figure, figure on the left side we have a metal and on the right side we have an n-type semiconductor. So in the metal we know electrons are filled up to the Fermi level and beyond Fermi level there are no electrons and similarly this is the state of different energies uh, in an n-type semiconductor. It has a valence band, then we have a conduction band and the Fermi level is near to the conduction band since it is an n-type semiconductor. And we have defined the work function as the energy difference between the Fermi level and the vacuum level. So we can define this work function in terms of two energies. First, I can define a small energy difference which is phi i which is the energy difference between the Fermi level and the bottom of the conduction band. And then I can also define phi e as the energy difference from the bottom of the conduction band until the vacuum level. So I can say phi i plus phi e will be the total work function phi s. Isn't it so? Phi i is the energy required to excite 
electron from the Fermi level up to the conduction band and phi e is the energy required to excite electron from the bottom of the conduction band until the vacuum level. So, since phi i is very small, we can approximate this to be equal to phi e itself. And as you can see in this figure, phi m is greater than phi f and the semiconductor is n type. So, in this condition, we will get a rectifying type of metal semiconductor junction. Now, these energy levels are applicable when the metal and semiconductor are sitting separately that is before they form a contact. If a junction is formed between these two types of materials, this metal and a semiconductor, their energy levels will be changed because then electrons will be flowing from one material to the other one and there will be surely some difference in energy levels. So, let us see what will happen when this metal and this n-type semiconductor forms a junction. So, as soon as a junction is formed between these two materials, since the work function of the n-type semiconductor is much smaller, the electrons are easily excited from the n-type semiconductor and they will start to flow into the metal. And they will start to accumulate at the junction region near the metal and hence the metal surface near the junction will gain a net negative charge and the semiconductor side, side near to the junction will gain a relative positive charge. So, as a result of this flow of electrons from the semiconductor to the metal side, there will be changes in the energy levels. First of all, as we have seen, when a junction is formed or when a contact is formed between two different materials, the first alignment is with the Fermi level. The Fermi level will be equated on both sides or will be brought to the same level on both sides as soon as a junction or contact is formed. So, then only we can form that to be a junction only if the Fermi level becomes equal. So, this Fermi level will be equal on both the sides and as we have seen electrons from the semiconductor will be flowing towards the metal side and due to the formation or the accumulation of charges near the surface of this contact, there will be shift in energy levels. So, let us look into the difference in energy levels after the formation of contact. So, this picture B represents the metal semiconductor junction after the formation of contact and this is the case before the formation of contact. So, before contact forming, as we have seen, the energy levels are just like in a metal and a semiconductor as we have studied in different videos earlier. But after the junction is formed, due to the flow of electron and this equalization of Fermi energy, there is shift in energy level on either side. So, the most notable change is on the semiconductor side. So, as we can see here, earlier, before forming a junction, when we look from the metal to the semiconductor side, we can see what is this energy difference. This is surely phi m minus phi e, right? So, right after the formation of junction, when we move from the metal to the semiconductor side, we will have to overcome an energy difference of phi m minus phi e. So, that is just the case even before the formation of contact. So, after contact forming as well, the energy that has to be overcome by an electron from the metal to the semiconductor side is phi m minus phi e itself. But on the semiconductor side, there is much difference in the energy levels. So, as we have said, electrons from this semiconductor will be flowing to the metal side right after the formation of contact. And as a result, the Fermi level is being lowered to the level of the Fermi level of the metal. And what is that difference in levels? We can see that it is equal to, it is approximately equal to phi m minus phi e, right? So, 
it is approximately equal to phi m minus phi s. This is phi s and phi m phi m minus phi s is the phi s is the energy difference between the Fermi level and between the two Fermi levels of semiconductor and the metal. So as soon as the contact is being formed, the conduction band of the semiconductor will be lowered by phi m minus phi s. Similarly, in the balance band as well, we can see a change in shape. And this phi m minus phi s lowering is not seen all across the material. There is a sharp, there is a slow fall in the conduction band. Uh, as indicated here, there is a slight slope here. So when an electron moves from the semiconductor into the metal side, that is if an electron is moving from the right side to the left side, overcoming this junction region, it will have to slowly climb a hilly region, a slope, an a slope in energy. It will have to slowly gain some energy in order to overcome this barrier, in order to move across this junction. So this is the change that happens when a junction is formed. So first the Fermi level will be brought to the same level. Then from the metal surface to the semiconductor side, there is an energy difference of phi m minus phi e that has to be overcome. And on the semiconductor side, there is a lowering of both the conduction band and the valence band. And a phi m minus phi s amount of energy will be lowered on the conduction band. Earlier the conduction band was up to this level. Now it is lowered like this. There is a difference in shape as well. Now as a result, for an electron moving from the metal side to the semiconductor side, it has to overcome an energy barrier, right? So what will be the energy barrier? Let us denote it as E into V, which is the energy barrier that has to be overcome. So while moving from the metal side to the semiconductor side, let me call this EVMS. It has to overcome a barrier of phi m minus phi e. And if an electron is moving from the semiconductor side to the metal side, it has to slowly overcome a barrier of phi m minus phi s. So the barrier that has to be overcome by an electron moving from the semiconductor side to the metal side is given by phi m minus phi s. So both the electrons moving from the metal to the semiconductor as well as from the semiconductor to the metal has to overcome some barrier. And which barrier is higher? Electrons moving from metal to semiconductor has to overcome a higher barrier. This barrier is comparatively lesser than the phi m minus phi e barrier. And at equilibrium, we can see that the net current flow across this junction is zero. So even though there is difference in barriers from metal side to the semiconductor side as well as from semiconductor to the metal side, the net current across the junction is zero because usually the metal side will have more number of electrons and the semiconductor will have lesser number of electrons, free electrons. So this difference in barrier will be overcome by the difference in concentration of electrons. So the number of electrons moving across the junction at, at equilibrium point in a equilibrium state is zero in a metal semiconductor junction. Now let us look into a case when we bias this metal semiconductor junction. First let us reverse bias this junction. So in a reverse biasing in this junction we will connect this n-type semiconductor to the positive side of a cell and this metal to the negative of a cell. So you can remember like this, we usually connect n-type to the p side for reverse biasing, right? So the condition is just the same here as well. So this is the reverse biasing of a metal semiconductor junction. Now, if we bias this junction like this, applying a V voltage across the junction, then the biasing will affect the energy levels of this metal semiconductor junction. 
it will have an effect on the energy bands of the semiconductor region so as you can see the conduction band of the semiconductor is changing is getting affected due to the externally applied potential earlier we have seen that the conduction band was lowered by an amount phi m minus phi s under no biasing and when we apply a potential bias a reverse bias the width of the conduction band is increasing towards the bottom by an additional amount ev where v is the applied voltage so this is the effect of reverse biasing on the energy bands of a metal semiconductor junction and on the metal side the applied potential is not having any effect the barrier that is faced by an electron moving from the metal to the semiconductor is still phi m minus phi e but for an electron moving from the semiconductor to the metal side the barrier has changed it has increased and the new barrier to be overcome the new hill that has to be climbed is phi m minus phi s plus e d so let us write the equation for current moving across this junction the current that is flowing across a junction is a function of both temperature and the energy gap or the energy barrier that is felt across the junction so we can write the equation for the current flowing from the metal side to the semiconductor as constants into t square into exponential the usual equation is exponential minus delta e by kt where delta e is the barrier to be overcome so i can write the equation for the current from the metal side to the semiconductor side as ac t square into exponential minus the barrier height that is felt for an electron moving from the metal side to the semiconductor side is phi m minus phi so i can write exponential minus phi m minus phi e divided by kt so this is the this will be the current that is moving across this junction under reverse biasing now what will happen if we apply forward by forward biasing to this junction under forward biasing we will be connecting this n type semiconductor to the negative side of the battery and the positive side of the cell will be connected to the metal so you can remember that n side is connected to n of the battery in the forward but in forward biasing right so that condition holds here as well so what will be the current across this junction under this condition so first let us look at the changes in the energy band under forward biasing so if we apply potential like this the change in change in the energy band on the semiconductor side is as given in this figure the conduction band which was earlier phi m minus phi s lowered will be shifted up by an amount of ev so the new lowering will be phi m minus phi s minus ev so in the earlier figure we had seen that phi m minus phi s was the barrier height that was felt by an electron moving from the semiconductor side to the metal side now the electrons that are moving from the semiconductor to the metal side will have to overcome a much smaller value of barrier height which is phi m minus phi s minus ev so in this case if you write the equation for the current in forward bias moving from the metal side sorry the semiconductor side to the metal side will be so here it is ac t square ac t square into exponential minus phi m minus phi s minus ev divided by kt so this is the current flowing from the semiconductor to the metal side under forward bias so even under forward bias there is flow of electron from the metal to the semiconductor side as well even though 
the number is smaller the number of electrons that can move across the junction from the metal to the semiconductor side is lower still there will be some amount of electrons that can overcome this phi m minus phi e energy barrier so compared to this barrier that is felt by electrons moving from the semiconductor to the metal side the phi m minus phi e barrier is higher but the contribution cannot be neglected and we can write under forward bias the equation for current flowing from the metal side to the semiconductor side will be ac t square into exponential minus of phi m minus phi e divided by kt so that is still there the equation is same as the reverse bias current because under forward bias or under reverse bias as we see in this figure there is no change in barrier height that is felt by electrons moving from the metal to the semiconductor here as well as here the barrier height is same but for electrons moving from the semiconductor to the metal side under reverse bias the barrier height is very high and under forward bias the barrier height is very low so that is the difference that is why this junction can act like a rectifying contact under reverse bias electrons are facing a much more bigger barrier height moving from the semiconductor to the metal side and under forward bias they can move freely that is how this junction can allow unidirectional flow of current so as we have said under forward bias there is flow of electrons in both the direction in one direction it is very smooth so that equation is given by ism equal to ac t square into exponential minus phi m minus phi s minus ev by kt and there is also a reverse current that is flowing from the metal to the semiconductor which is of minute value so the net current existing across the junction is given by ism minus ims which is equal to ac t square into we can take these terms as common here it is phi e and here we have phi s but as i have already mentioned the value of phi s is very close to phi e so we can exchange phi s by phi e in this equation so we can write the net current that is moving across this junction as ac t square into exponential minus phi m minus phi e by kt which can be taken as common into exponential minus of minus ev which is plus ev by kt minus 1 so you can take the difference of equation 1 and 2 and take all the possible terms as common and you will get this equation now the first part of this equation this term is simply the reverse current right that term is the current existing from the metal side to the semiconductor side and that is just the reverse current so we can write the net current is equal to is into exponential ev by kt minus 1 so this is the equation for net current flowing across a rectifying contact under forward bias so this is much this looks similar to a diode equation right so if we plot the relation between voltage and current v and net current then under forward bias it will look like in this curve the current across the metal semiconductor junction will increase exponentially if we apply a forward forward voltage or forward bias across this junction so if we plot the forward characteristic of this rectifying contact it will look like an exponential curve whose equation is given by this this equation net current equal to is the reverse current is into exponential ev by kt minus 1 here is is almost a constant given by ac t square into exponential minus phi m minus phi e by kt as i have already mentioned 
now what will be the reverse characteristic of this metal semiconductor junction so after a for a suitable voltage have been applied it will be almost a constant which is equal to the reverse current across the junction which is given by this equation is is a constant and depends on the work function of the metal and the semiconductor so initially it has a dependence on voltage since as we know there will be some flow of electron from the semiconductor to the metal side as well initially it will have some dependence on voltage but after that finally it is a constant equal to the reverse current across the metal semiconductor junction given by this equation this equation which simply depends on the ims and the work function of the metal and the semiconductor so this is how the rectifying contact behaves in forward biasing and reverse biasing and we have seen how these junctions are formed we have we looked into why these behaves as a rectifying contact because this allows unidirectional flow of current under reverse biasing we can see it is difficult for electrons to pass across this junction because from metal side to the semiconductor side as well as from the semiconductor to the metal side there is a very huge barrier that is existing so under reverse biasing there is very low amount of current flowing across this junction and that is actually given by this reverse current equation this is very low now under forward biasing the barrier height will be reduced on the semiconductor side and there will be a smooth conduction of electrons across the junction so the current is given by this equation and the current will exponentially increase with voltage so this can act like a rectifying contact so i hope this concept of metal semiconductor rectifying contact is clear for you just go through the reverse biasing and forward biasing condition and the energy diagrams of the metal semiconductor junction which forms a rectifying contact thank you